So you may have just gotten sued by Capital One and so sorry to hear that. Now, you're probably looking at this lawsuit and wondering how am I gonna pay this? The purpose of this video is to really get granular on what your options are when you've been sued by Capital One, how to resolve that debt, is it your debt, those kind of things. We're gonna answer those questions and more. So stay tuned because we are just getting started. So you're maybe getting calls from Capital One for unpaid debt and wondering whether they're actually gonna garnish your wages at some point. So you don't wanna get to this step and then get to a place where you're getting garnished. So we're gonna cover just exactly how to settle debt with Capital One before they sue you, before they try to take money from your paycheck. So let's get started. Welcome to Ascend Finance's YouTube channel where we take complex topics such as settling debt with Capital One and simplify them into simple human understandable language so that you can make the most informed decision and get out of debt cheaper, easier, and faster. My name is Ben and I am the former CEO of a debt settlement firm where we just settle debt all day long every day. And so if you are struggling with debt, you may be getting inundated with ads telling you that you should do emergency debt relief or you should do credit counseling or you should file bankruptcy. But what really should you do? I mean, there's so many options and it's so complicated. So to answer this question, we actually built a debt resolution cost and options calculator that goes through each of your options, such as debt settlement, debt relief, debt management, bankruptcy, debt payoff planning, et cetera. And it gives you the cost, the pros and cons, your options in an unbiased uh, way. And the goal is really just to help you get out of debt cheaper, easier, and faster. And you can access it in the link description below or you can visit us at tryascend.com. Also, that's 100% free. And and it doesn't require an email address because sometimes you want to stay anonymous and you just want to figure out how to get out of debt that cheaper, easier, and faster. And so we wanted to provide this resource for anyone and everyone. So let's cover what we're going to cover in this video. And hopefully this will really help you get out of debt. This debt was uh, Capital One. So first we're going to talk about how to settle debt with credit Capital One before going to court. The second thing we're gonna cover is, does Capital One always sue you for unpaid debt? The third thing we're gonna cover is, when will a debt collector sue you for unpaid debt? And the fourth option we're gonna cover is, what are your options if you don't wanna settle with Capital One? So like, what if you don't wanna settle? What if you don't wanna do anything about it? So we're gonna cover all that more. And I also wanna let you know that your situation is unique, so please comment if you have any questions. My goal is to answer all your questions, but you know, sometimes I can't. So please comment below if you have any questions. And we'd love it if you like or subscribe and join the community to help people get out of debt faster. It's always encouraging to me and it really helps motivate us to provide more free unbiased content to kind of help you get out of those debts. So thanks so much for watching. Let's let's jump right in because I want I have a lot of content. I want to get you as much information as possible. So first is how to settle debt with Capital One before going to court. So I've settled a lot of debt, so I have a pretty good understanding of how to do this. But first, you're going to probably Capital One and you can do this yourself or you can hire a debt settlement company. They'll charge you fees. So if, if you're kind of comfortable with doing it yourself, you can do it yourself. Second, you're going to basically, you know, talk to them about this debt. If it's your debt and they're being calling you, you can kind of walk through kind of uh, what's been happening in your situation, why you've been getting out of out of this point. Now, Capital One may be more in, uh, in settling the debt for lower than paid as it kind of gets older. So like, let's say you're like one or two days past due, they're probably not gonna settle for 50% of charges. It's just kind of how it works. It's not, you know, they're, they're probably still like, they, it hasn't even hit your credit report yet. So if you're if it's behind and past due, that's when they may be more interested to settle for lower than what is owed. Uh, because at this point, if you've already, you know, it's already hurt your credit score at this point. And and at this point, they're like, well, I'd rather have something than nothing. And I know you're facing a financial hardship. So the chances are that you have other creditors and you have to settle with them too. And so I'd rather have not something than nothing. Um, so that's probably kind of what may be going on in the bank's side um, where they're like, I'd rather make some money on this. And I know you're going through financial hardship so we can kind of work out some sort of deal. And then there's different types of settlements. So there can be a stipulated sell settlement and a, a lump sum. And you may be able to get better terms on a lump sum because in some banks perspective, cash in hand is better than cash promised. So so it's just something to consider when you're kind of doing these settlements. You know, Capital One, they uh, may not settle for 50% of charges, uh, depending on, but they may. It just depends on a lot of situations and, and unique things. So just be honest about where, what you're dealing with and they, and you may be able to do that, you know. And question or anything, you can always reach out to us, 833-272-3631, and we try to kind of answer any questions you have. The second thing is that I want to go through is, you know, does Capital One always sue for unpaid debt? So like maybe you don't want to settle, but you don't want to be sued. Like, do they always sue for unpaid debt? The answer is, Potentially, but potentially not. Um, you know, a lot of these debt collectors, Capital One is probably often more litigious than some other creditors. So you see the, them suing for often for more, but not always, you, not not 100% that they're gonna sue you for that unpaid debt. But you know, it is a risk if you, if you keep letting it go 
more past due. It's a risk that you kind of, you know, maybe are triaging to see whether you, you want to sell it or, you know, just keep letting it go past due. Now, the third thing I want to do is to kind of go like go through, well, when will a debt collector sue you for unpaid debt debt? And this really depends. Some debt collectors, I used to kind of work in the industry on the, from the bank's perspective. And some of the debt collectors use these like payment mechanisms that say, you know, will this people person have the ability to pay the debt, but just don't want to pay the debt. So there's like these different formulas that they might go through, like, Hey, are they paying on their house? Are they paying on their their car or, you know, are they paying other debt other than our debt from their credit report, you know? And so they go through these things and it has like a payment score. So what they're trying to determine is, do you have the ability to pay, but you don't have the willingness to pay, right? Because if they sue you, they're going to incur different costs associated with the lawsuit, right? So in, in their perspective, they probably don't want to sue you if there's no chance that they're going to get the money back and you're just going to file bankruptcy, right? So they might incur cost from that. Now, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but it's something that they need to consider because if they sue everyone for unpaid debt, you know, they might end up with a bunch of bankruptcies and not make any money, just incurring a, a ton of stress, a ton of costs on there, there and too. So when a debt collector sue, does sue, when, when will Capital One sue? It's not a, a, a set formula, you know, like, um, so it's just, it is a risk if you, you know, continue to not pay, but it's not necessarily that they're always going to sue, right? And lastly, like, um, let's say you don't want to settle a debt, but what are your other options if you don't want to settle a debt? So the, probably the more common options are potentially debt management, where um, if it's a credit card and debt management and credit counseling uh, are the same thing, where a nonprofit company would try to negotiate the interest rates. This may be more likely to be done when you're you're not as far past due, but potentially not. But what, what the debt management companies do is trying to, to basically lower the interest rate to make it more affordable. The challenge with debt management is that it may not save you enough money to make the debt still affordable. So like maybe you have a 15% interest rate, they get down to 9%. Is that actually saving you money? Is it actually giving you the relief you need from the debt? Maybe, maybe not. So the other common alternative to, to settling debt is probably bankruptcy. Two different main consumer options. There's more, more chapters of bankruptcy, but the chapter seven bankruptcy and the chapter 13 bankruptcy. The chapter seven bankruptcy is, a, is often a very fast bankruptcy. It's, it gets rid of your unsecured debt rather quickly and it's often the cheapest. So it can, you know, maybe much cheaper than the other options. It may get you out of debt within, you know, 90 to 120 days. So that's an option. The challenge with that is you have to qualify for it. So there is a qualification mechanism. I can include a link in the description below to our chapter seven qualification calculator to help you estimate if you're kind of interested in that option. The other option is chapter 13 bankruptcy. It's often some people may not do chapter seven because they don't qualify or they have assets they may lose in a chapter seven bankruptcy. And chapter 13 bankruptcy uh, allows you to often keep those assets, but it's a lot longer. It's a three or five year plan. Generally it costs quite a bit more in terms of attorney fees and often trustee fees are quite a bit more expensive. So our calculator below that I, I kind of mentioned earlier does go through those options. It, it definitely does a very kind of holistic view of your finances and kind of gives you these different options. But it's really important to kind of know your options when you're kind of facing this like uncertainty with having to pay the creditors, Capital One specifically. So all that to say, I hope this video is super helpful and I hope it was really like just unbiased in the sense that you kind of get a bunch of information that can help you decide whether to settle the debt with Capital One or whether you should do something else with Capital One. Please take the calculator below if you're if that could be helpful for you. Uh, if not, no worries. And I hope you have a great day and thanks so much for watching.